It's been a green and gold weekend at the Big A. The Oakland A's have used power and pitching to take three straight from their Southern California rivals. Today, the A's go for a clean sweep of the Angels behind an ace who has started to regain his form. Sonny Gray goes to the mound in game four, coming up next. Day baseball from Anaheim. It is hot and lots of sunshine, and Sonny Gray is set to take them out. Sonny looking for his fourth one of the year, and Chris Davis has put on a big show this weekend in front of friends and family. A's going for the sweep. Today's game presented by Hyundai, and it's the A's and the Angels coming up on CSN California. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Great series so far for the A's, and offensively, they have scored 19 runs, Ray. They have executed well. They've done the little things, but there's nothing like hitting the long ball. It's a hitter's park, and I think the A's have shown it, maybe even more so today with a bright, sunny day. But in the first three games of this series, how about Marcus Simeon? Just a nice, easy swing on a hanging split finger fastball. That was from Lincecum on Thursday night. Just an easy swing. And then Chris Davis, this is the first of two monster home runs. This one to left center field, just a nice, easy swing. Stephen Vogt against Jared Weaver came up big with a home run to right center field. Then how about this one? Straight away center field driving in three. A home run by Chris Davis. Looks like it's going to be a double. And last night it was Danny Valencia joining the group as he also hit a two run home run in the first inning giving Overton a two to nothing lead but a great opportunity today for the A's to do something that is very rare in that sweep of four game series. And it's up to Sonny Gray and since coming off the disabled list Sonny Gray has pitched well. He just hasn't got a W. In fact W's have been really hard to come by for Sonny. If the A's can score him some runs like they have in the first three ball games, it should be a good day for Sonny because he has pitched well here at Anaheim against the Angels. He has a great breaking ball. He throws it hard. A good two seam fastball. You look at the numbers and in this series so far two starters have won ball games. They like to make it three. All right, it'll be Hector Santiago, the left-hander pitching for the Angels. He'll be looking for his fifth win of the year. So, A's hoping it's a big Sunday as they go for the four-game sweep here at the Big A. A's Angels coming up. We'll have lineups and first pitch right after this.
Baseball on CSN California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. It's back, the Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack. Taste it before it's gone at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Lots of sunshine and it's a hot day here in Anaheim as the Angels take the field wearing the red tops this afternoon. And for the athletics they're going for the four game sweep in Anaheim. Game time weather presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is open daily. 86 degrees and it's a little humid folks. That lady's got the right idea with the umbrella. Sometimes an umbrella is more important when the sun's out than it is when it's raining. Today would be one of those days. Especially have the, if you have the good seats down below. Yep. You, get, you get down on the bowl, it is hot. And especially right field, there's no bowl out there, but there would be sun all day. So let's look at the lineup this afternoon for the Oakland A's. Coco Crisp is going to lead things off in center field. Marcus Simeon slides up to the two spot. He'll be at shortstop. Valencia hits third and plays third. Chris Davis is your cleanup hitter. Billy Butler will DH. Jake Smolinski in right field. Josh Fegley is your catcher. Yonder Alonzo is your first baseman. And Arizmendi Alcantara is the second baseman. Hector Santiago makes his second start against the A's this year and one of those came early in April the A's had him on the road but saw the Angels come back and score four in the last two innings but he is pretty good but he's been struggling lately and four and four in the season and as we have talked in this series injuries to the starting rotation several of the starters for the Angels puts a lot of extra pressure on this young man and he's got a good fastball that he likes to use but his changeup is pretty good as also uh, also because he'll throw it any times especially with the right handers in the lineup today. So Santiago is ready and so is Coco Crisp. So with the switch hitters in the lineup all right handed hitters for the A's except for Yonder Alonso and the first pitch from Santiago is well outside. Twelve thirty seven. Here's your start time today. And temperature hotter than probably what the temperature shows at least. We're cool though. It's nice and cool with the overhang up here. Not bad. <laughs> now Fredo's on the bench. You just think if he is coaching first base now, he'd really be hot, but he's dressed for the bench today. So a 3 0 count to Coco Crisp to start the game. It's nice that he was on base last night, scoring four runs on base four times. Not close. In a four pitch walk to start this ball game. Well, this Marcus was, Simeon. Yeah, this was the April 12th when Marcus Simeon took him deep twice. And for Marcus, numbers two and three of his now 13 on the season. But it just easy swings. And that's been the oppressive thing about Marcus Simeon in his 13 home runs, including the one he hit on Thursday. And that was the game the Ace thought they had won. The Angels scored some runs late. First pitch is a strike. Quick throw. And Coco gets back. 0 and 1 to Simeon. 245 overall with 13 home runs, 34 RBIs. And in this series, he's 5 for 11. Double, a homer. He has scored four runs. As usual with the left handed pitcher, the first baseman does not stay on the bag. He kind of cheats a little bit because of the hole. That they like to see Mike Sosha likes to have the first baseman do that to take up some of the hole between first and second. See that Crone off the bag. Sometimes it's a little bit shaky as far as a pitcher throwing over because the first baseman has to be aware, kind of going back and forth. And you'd think you could steal, but that's not always the case either. Lefty looking right at the runner at first. Again, two and one. A's do not have a stolen base in this series. Let's look at the Angels' defense for today. Daniel Nava is in left field. Mike Trout in center. Cole Calhoun in right. Marte, Simmons, Giovatella, and Crone on the infield third to first. And Carlos Perez gets his first start in the series. And he's already had a meeting at the mound after seven pitches. Santiago a little out of sorts early. Seven pitches, only one strike. 
And now make it two. The count even two and two. Valencia to follow. Charles Nagy had to be walking in from the bullpen with Hector Santiago saying, hey, have a good day, man. This is going to be a good day for you. He's got to be wondering. Throwing strikes, but the A's have to take advantage, get a good pitch to hit. Which they have been doing in this three game series so far, this being the fourth and final game. Check swing and now a full count. Three and two, you'd like to see the runner take off at times, but with the pitchers having a little tough time throwing strikes, you might get a hitter swinging at a pitch that he normally would not be swinging, and you take the walk. So Coco has not been running a lot lately. We'll see what he does here. Not going, and the ball's popped up, headed for the upper deck and into the upper deck. Coco Crisp was not running on that 3 2 pitch. See if he's running here. Santiago steps off. Figure out those signs no, yet? I gave up. Yeah. I thought I had a couple right. Swing! And a miss on a high pass. I think Mike Sosha is so accustomed to being a catcher and calling signs using fingers that, you know, just. Well, he knows I'm watching him, yeah. so. Challenge with the fastball up a little bit and Marcus Simeon and tell you it's a tough at bat if the pitcher is having a tough time throwing strikes because you want to be disciplined but you also want to be aggressive and that was a pretty good pitch to hit for Marcus but just got past him. So one away for Danny Valencia another ace hitter who's had a good series Valencia five for twelve he's got a home run and knocked in three in the series. He's have scored 19 runs on 35 hits in the first two games of the series. A lot of good at bats. They've executed well. And they've hit five home runs as a team in the series. So that's why they've won all three. Well, not the only reason, but pitching's been good. And we have seen too many times already this year, and we see it a lot where one facet of the game is great, the others aren't. Well, the A's are putting it together now, and that's the reason they have won three in a row and started this 20 consecutive games played on a positive note. Three in a row and four out of five. The A's still 10 games under 500. Now, Danny Valencia actually looking at Ron Washington. This may be don't swing because Santiago is a little bit wild. However, with the big man on deck, Valencia usually likes to swing 3 0. You have to be disciplined, though. And that one's not close. So, a couple of walks in the first inning by Hector Santiago. Charles Nagy is going to visit his pitcher, but one thing, Kipe, that you mentioned all righties with the exception of Alonzo, of course, switch hitters in the lineup, but Santiago has more than just a fastball, but that's all he's thrown. And he, he's wild with that pitch. And you, you throw as many as he has in the majority of the amount of the strike zone, you have to mix in some other pitches. Whether it be a curveball to get him to follow through because he's leaving the pitches up in the strike zone or out of the strike zone. Turn over a fastball, change up, but so far the A's are seeing nothing but fastballs. And if Chris Davis sees one that he's liking, it could be an early lead for the A's. Davis had 247, 18 home runs and 50 RBIs. Couple of homers in this series. First pitch is high. A lot of pitches high as well. Yeah, that's that's tough because he is dropping, driving, throwing, and and just just not following through. That's why what Stephen Vogt did with Rich Hill in his first start. Had him throw a curveball after four fastballs and missed badly. Better pitch there catches the outside corner, 91 miles an hour. Davis, five hits in 12 at bats in this series. Tied for sixth in the league in home runs, tied for seventh in the league in RBIs. So, really having a nice year. After a slow start. Yeah, 
And maybe now that it's getting closer and you start thinking about it more, maybe the Bay's best All Star possibility. If you look at the raw numbers, he's got them. Inside, but a better pitch by Santiago. So now the count two and two. Davis with eight doubles on the year, a triple. An on base percentage of 285, a slugging percentage of over 500, which is very good. Two two pitch, chase that high fastball, and Davis strikes out. So two walks, two strikeouts for Santiago here in the first inning. And all fastballs. I guess Perez just trying to get him to throw the fastball and that pitch a little bit up and maybe away, but similar pitch Chris Davis hit against Fernando Salas a couple of nights ago, straight away center, or to left center. That's the pitch selection this year. There are a lot of fastballs on that chart. Today he's just trying to find the fastball. So here's Billy Butler hitting in the fifth spot. A little breaking ball that drops in for a strike. So we'll see if that helps Santiago out. Chris Betts second, Valencia at first. And Butler skies one to shallow left field. Simmons waits and Simmons makes the catch. Got to be a tough sun today as well. Simmons hung in there. So the A's strand a pair in the top of the first. Afternoon. Looks like everybody slides up a spot. Cole Calhoun's going to lead off, then Trout hits second, Pujols third, Crone fourth. Johnny Giovatella is in the fifth spot, Jeffrey Marte sixth, Daniel Nava seventh, Carlos Perez eighth, Simmons, the shortstop, is ninth. Sonny Gray making the start for the Athletics today. It is his 14th start because he spent a couple of weeks on the disabled list. One start came against the Angels and a guy named Mike Trout. Get a home run off of him. That was at the Coliseum. The A's losing that game by a score of four to one. And Sonny picked up the loss. But Sonny has pitched better since returning from the DL. His curveball is down. His fastball is down. And if he keeps everything down, he should have success. But you're right about the lineup. And I think Mike Sosha, if it was ever a time for somebody not to get any sleep, it would have been last night because trying to figure out this lineup. So from Bob Melvin's standpoint, he's saying, wow. Calhoun doesn't mess around as he takes a rip at the first pitch and lines a single into right field. So Calhoun, he's had a good series, five hits. So the leadoff man aboard after one pitch from Sonny Gray. Here's the A's defense this afternoon. 
Davis in left, Crispin center, Smolinski in right, and Valencia, Simeon on the left side, Alcantara and Alonzo on the right side. Pegley is your catcher. That first pitch fastball was not down. It was up a little bit, and it sounded like a base hit. Sounded like it's going to be more, but first pitch hitting was Cole Calhoun. I don't think you put Calhoun in the leadoff spot to be your prototypical leadoff hitter and take pitches, as he showed in the first one of the game. Trout, he goes after the first pitch, drives and fouled on the right field line. So who knows, maybe a game plan in play here against Sonny Gray by the Angels. We saw that note about first pitch balls put in play. We'll see if that continues. 15 homers, 50 RBIs for Trout. And now it's 0 2. That's a good curveball for the second strike. Mike Trout with a curveball last night from Dylan Overton. But it's interesting, Coco Chris talking after the game saying that he thought he had a chance to catch it. Well, he didn't think it was going to go out. But Overton through the curveball didn't throw many after that. Mostly fastball change ups, and congratulations picking up his first major league victory and his first major league start. One and one and two, the count to Trout. Five and two thirds last night for Overton. The three runs he gave up, all three solo home runs. And I was thinking of the great late Catfish Hunter gave up a lot of home runs, solos. Same Burt Blylevin solos, Robin Roberts. You know, if you don't walk guys in front, you can give up the home runs. That's just one run. He saw his offense score more. Trout again lays off the hard breaking ball, two and two, the count. Who holds to follow here in the bottom of the first? He's tried to avoid with Mike Trout as a curveball or any pitches down and in. Inner part of the plate, he's so quick inside. Simeon can't get it in the left center field. And Calhoun will stop at second. Two on and nobody out. So let's look at. Some of the highlights from last night with Dylan Overton making his major league debut. So a pretty good changeup, which we had heard that that's a good pitch for him. That was the fastball inside, and then Mike Trout hit the curveball at all these solo home runs, but changeups are good there to Marte and also to Petit. And struck out Albert Pujols on three fastballs. Life Morgan, of course, appreciated. Probably had a nice. I mean, you guys saw him at, at lunch yesterday when they finally let him go. So I wonder how late he was up last night, telling everybody how he pitched. And he pitched great. Yes, he did. So here's Pujols steps on, steps up with two on and nobody out. First pitch, just a touch low. 14 homers, 48 RBIs for Albert Pujols. A's know they have won three games. They've won the series, but man, if there's ever time to get greedy, today is the day to try to get the sweep. And they really have their ace, their best pitcher on the mound. Yeah, the Angels have lost six in a row. They're 31 and 44. He's 32 and 42 and have won four to five. Two and oh, be careful here. And now three and oh with CJ Crone in the on deck circle. Don't, don't know that there's a whole lot to. Momentum in baseball carrying over from day to day. You know, people may disagree with me. I think it's more about if you start executing, you'll start winning games. Yeah. 3 0 pitches hit high in the air to right field. Calhoun is going to tag. And Calhoun, he will go to third. So on a 3 0 pitch, Albert Pujols hits a fly ball to right field. It does move up a runner, one away. 
Here's our Geico quote of the day. Bob Melvin on Dylan Overton's debut. Quote, the most impressive thing is giving up two homers in the first and continuing to pitch. Pitch that deep in the game and that effectively it speaks volumes about the character of the young man. He did not really seem rattled by giving up the two home runs. Well, Bob Melvin was ecstatic as was Kurt Young and especially with a depleted bullpen a, a very well we saw some guys up in the bullpen but there were not a lot available and Matson for sure so for Liam Hendricks to pick him up and go deep but also for Overton to pitch into the sixth inning was was very nice especially in your major league debut there's always concern I would think from the staff how deep is he going to go but I think Bob Melvin said it perfectly that he he did pitch great. Now he can rest for four days. Yep. One and oh to CJ Crone. Crone hitting in the cleanup spot, 250, six homers, 31 RBIs. 258, I should say. Sonny has a good sinking fastball, get a ground ball at an infield to get out of this inning. Now he's ahead in the count, one and two, so we'll see what he does with Crone. Take that back, it's one and one. And your ground balls, Ray. Ground ball percentage, 54.1. But that's also incumbent on him throwing his fastball down on the zone. If he elevates it straight, it does not get the sinking action on it. Even a curveball, he can. Hit the ball down. He's had a couple of games this year, double figures, make it four in double figures with ground ball outs. Sonny seems to like the hot weather too. He's growing up in the south and enjoying the, the, the warm weather. He pitches extremely well here, as well as Arlington, Texas, coming to some of the hottest temperatures the A's endure during the season. Drive right field, and that's going to be a hit. Trout was on the move. So Calhoun will score. Trout will go to third, and the Angels lead 1 0. So pretty good hitting by CJ Crone as he lands on the right field. So Crone gets his 32nd RBI. Well, the pitch actually was down, not bad, but Crone give him credit, and Josh Finkley was coming out from behind. In the event there was not a any contact made, but Crone doing a good job. Too bad as the case last night, a couple of line drives were caught by Muncie. That was not a chance for Smolensky, especially with Trout on the move. Well, C.J. Crone, afraid to spray it around. Hard to believe he's been going back and forth between Triple A and the big leagues. Giovatella. Ball and Giovatella swings through it. Six for 15 in the series for the Angels second baseman. Matthew Nell Escobar out. Giovatella hitting in that leadoff spot for a couple of games in this series, but today dropping down to the fifth spot. Center field. Plenty deep. Trout will tag. So will Crone. And Crone will bluff. Trout will trot home to score. And it's 2 nothing Angels. Sacrifice fly for Johnny Giovatella. And there's your first to third with Trout on the move. Being able to get to third base where Giovatella could drive him in. So RBI number 26. And this is your fundamental baseball. Crone with the runner third gets him in. And you know, just good base running and good execution. So the A's look like they had an opportunity to score in the top half of the inning, but it's the Angels doing it in their half. So starting Trout on the Crone pitch that he got the base mm -hmm. hit got the Angels a run. Because yeah. he might not have made it considering Crone's ball hit as hard as it was. Yeah, I don't know that he would have went to third yeah. if he was not moving on the pitch. Marte. Marte one for ten in the series. And now 
2 and 0. Oh. So three hits and a couple of runs here in the first inning for the Angels. Popped up into the seats. Lots of playing time for Jeffrey Marte. Angels getting a good look at him. We got Marte from the Tigers in January, right before spring training. Into the seats. Those seats are uh, filled up underneath the overhang all the way around. That's right. Be a good day to be there. Forget about the expensive seats down below. Take one of those above. Above the lower level underneath the overhang. Christmas is over at Anaheim. Yes. Christmas Eve and we'll Christmas Day. Up, yeah. Christmas wreaths still hanging around the ballpark. 2 2 pitch runner goes but Marte swings and misses side retired but a couple of runs for the Angels so after one in Anaheim Angels two A's nothing. Women on Saturday, July the second, with the salute to Armed Forces fireworks presented by PlayStation after the A's 705 A's versus the Pirates game. Enjoy patriotic music, which you're hearing right now during the show, which coincides with the long Independence Day weekend. Fans can watch the fireworks show from the outfield grants, but you know, as always, on-field capacity is limited, so get your tickets right now, so you can guarantee that if you want to go on the field, you can go to athletics.com/fireworks. Smolinski, Fegley, and Alonzo for the A's here in the second inning. Hector Santiago wobbled a little bit in the first. He walked a couple. And he's going to be right back into the stretch as Smolinski rolls one into center field for a leadoff single. Jake Smolinski can play. I mean, you, you think about the platoon in right field. Josh Reddick plays every day. But between Smolinski and Muncie. A couple of guys platooning, been doing a very good job defensively, swinging about well. Muncy playing the first three. Smolenski gets this afternoon. So here's Fegley. Fegley takes down and away. 273 for Fegley, a homer and eight RBIs. He's three for nine with a home run in his career against Hector Santiago. And he drives this one to right center. Hit pretty well. Trout and Calhoun coming together near the wall. It's off the wall. 
Picked up by Calhoun. He hustles it in and Smolinski will get to third and stop there. Fegley with a long double. And the A's have second and third. Nobody out. Fegley's first home run of the season came against Wilhelmson in a similar spot at the Coliseum, right center. He hit it, couldn't believe it. He may say the same thing about this one because he has not played a lot. On one time earlier this week, so in this past week, just Wednesday and today. So a good shot there, right center. Smolinski had to hold up, as you never know about Trout. And backing up was his right fielder, and Trout going into the wall and actually maybe jumped a little prematurely. If he goes back to wall, he might catch it. But it was hit hard by Fegley, made a big difference. Pick off uh -oh. and Smolinski oh. just gets back. Ooh. Carlos Perez. His eyes got big. He came out firing. And Bob Melvin's heart stopped. Fortunately, the hand got in, and you noticed as I didn't have taken a look at it, but it looked like Smolinski had got his hand in before they tagged him. But watch as he turns. This is what you're supposed to do. Turn back with your back to the catcher so you may get hit. But you turn back in fair territory as hammers on the back. Good. Good shot. Great, great shot. So a lot of hearts stopped from the A standpoint. So one and oh the count to Yonder Alonzo. Alonzo chases a pitch up and in. Now these are the opportunities we talked about, Cap, the situational baseball I saw Muncie a couple of nights ago. Same situation hit a ball to the right side scored a run on the ground ball and then scored a run on a sack fly. Second and third nobody out a great opportunity to score two and tie the game. Close pitch outside. Getting a runner in from third less than two outs right at 50 percent for Yonder Alonzo. He only has 29 at bats against left handed pitching. He's 5 for 29. Broken bat grounder. This is going to be a very productive out. It's going to get the run home. That's great. So give Alonzo his 18th RBI, and it's 2 to 1. And you get a lot of guys getting up off their seats in the dugout to say, nice going yonder. Smolenski getting the hit to start it, goes to third, and then yonder Alonzo. And now, as was the case a couple of nights ago, the infield comes in. So good execution by the A's so far in this inning. So that'll bring up the second baseman here is Mendy Alcantara. Let's see another ground ball here up the middle scores a run. This is outside with looks like a changeup. Alcantara started on Thursday. He was one for four. Chase the bad ball, one and one the count. I think in watching Perez throw to first on a pickoff, through to third on a pickoff. Same for Alcantara. These guys getting a chance to play, and from Perez' standpoint, probably to show his manager that maybe his hitting is not what he expected, but he can catch, he can throw, and handle a pitching staff. And for Alcantara, getting a, a start this afternoon for himself as well, a chance to do something special in the second inning. Right now he's got to put it in play. He is. He has not seen a strike in this at bat. He has swung at two balls. Shorten the swing just a little bit just to make contact. He has speed. And he got him swinging. So two outs here in the second. Well, last night Coco Crisp did it all. Flare down the left field line for a double. He hit a ball hard down the right field line past the first baseman. And that was another double. And this was the big one driving in a couple of runs with the infield in. Actually, back is on the right side. It was Giovatella trying to dive to make the stop, could not do it. And so a four runs scored by Coco last night. Big night for him and big opportunity with two outs to drive in a run. He let off the game with a four pitch walk. A 371 average with runners in scoring position. 
He's third best in the American League. Swing. And they pulled off that one in the count one and one. So you hate to leave that runner out there. A lot of fans working today. <laughs> The job might be for Perez, the catcher, to corral some of these fastballs out of the strike zone. Coming up and away. Yeah, I don't know that Santiago is quite sure where his fastball is going right now. Two and two the count. Thirty eight pitches already for Hector Santiago. I think Mike Sosha needs a starter to Oof, go deep today. Man. Big time. Good pitch there. Strike three call right on the outside corner. So Coco's called out. The A's do get a run on the two hits. And we are headed to the bottom of the second. It's now Angels two, A's one. Oof. Eastside Club accommodates up to 1,200 guests and includes free game catered meal and game tickets. For more information, call 510 638 Goes or visit athletics.com slash BBQ. So bottom of the second, Daniel Nava to lead it off. 2-1 Angels lead. Nava, Perez, and Simmons the bottom three for the Angels. Daniel Nava is a switch hitter. See if Sonny Gray can get a shutdown inning. Not up there. There's a kind of guiding the first two pitches that were up and out of the strike zone. Pedro Dava from the Bay Area. Bob Melvin asked him if he's going to stick stick around in the Bay Area in the offseason. He said, "Nope." Phoenix. Doesn't everybody go to Arizona in the winter? All the players. So Ray, I got to correct myself. I thought the. Pitch to Coco Crista in the inning. I actually thought it was a pretty good pitch. It was not. It was about a foot outside, so I stand corrected. It was. When a catcher it was back, a bad call is what it was. When a catcher backhands a ball, that's not good. No. And, and even if it's close to being a strike, normally umpires don't do that. Don't give a strike with a pitch that where well, the catcher has to reach that much. And I think at this level that. But an umpire, a pitcher, catcher, that you figure that if you're supposed to be around the plate, kind of makes it easy for an umpire. But 
you know, Santiago, really, in a sense, you say, wait a minute, you're throwing pitches all over the place. I'm not going to help you. Well, he did. Alonzo on the backhand to Sonny Gray, who jumps up to grab the throw that was just a little bit high. Comes down, steps on the bag, now it's out. Alonzo ranging to his right, but his feed, he knows, and he did it in Sonny Gray's last start with VR breaking a bat. He broke in front of Lowry, made a similar feed to Sonny Gray, and Sonny, a very good athlete, able to get over and cover nicely, and Alonzo is very smooth. and. You know the one thing he says he's good but he practices a lot it's not just uh, showing up and he spends a lot of time he did with Ron Washington in the spring it seemed like all infielders do Carlos Perez is the hitter first start in this series for Perez Sonny Gray Let's Valencia take charge and Valencia grabs it. So two outs here in the second inning. And that'll bring up Andrelton Simmons. Simmons at 222 with a homer and 10 RBIs. Simmons trying to get his offense going. Don't have to worry about his defense. One of the best pitches, if you could throw it for a strike, is a curveball. He just dropped a very good curveball for a strike to Simmons. And then a good heater. And the curveball sets it up, especially in the first pitch if it's a strike. A lot of hitters will not swing at it because it is a curveball. So if you can throw it for a strike, it sets up the entire bat. Well off the plate. Best I ever saw, late Bob Welsh. He could drop a curveball with his eyes closed in the first pitch of a of an at bat, first pitch of the game. Sonny Gray's curveball is hard. Usually at its best, it's down in the zone. Like that. Fegley very athletic behind the plate as well to be able to block pitches in the dirt. Seventh time that Fegley has caught Sonny Gray this year, 14th start. So he and Stephen Boat have divided equally the starts with Sonny on the mound. Some pitchers like their own catcher. Yeah. Other ones, I don't know that it makes a whole lot of difference to them. Well, I, I think of the situation with the A's, you better not be particularly interested in a certain one of the platoon system because if it's a lefty righty, that's kind of the way it's going to be. Which they work in tandem very, very well together. That is uh, Vote and Fegley. Good friends, good teammates, cheer for each other. And Stephen Vote there watching his buddy catch this afternoon. Two and two to Andrelton Simmons. Then heartbreak him. Well, nice block by Fegley. Well, I guess that's a good spot for a curveball. Unless you yeah. absolutely have to throw it for a strike. Well, and he doesn't have to now if he were to throw it again. Simmons very patient that he gets two strikes, but he's he's setting fastball. And if he throws a curveball, which he probably won't, we have seen it in the past when he's gotten this count after a couple of curveballs, he's gone fastball. Popped up, foul territory. Valencia near the dugout, and he reaches, cannot quite get it. That's no help territory there. You nope. are on your own, Danny Valencia. Yeah, and we'll be back at the Coliseum on Wednesday when this is an out. And, and that's why pitchers love the Coliseum. Hitters love parks like this where this just out of the reach of Valencia. Reached as far as he could. And really the, the railings help because otherwise you fall in the dugout. <laughs> yes, you would. <laughs> so would not so it's it's better to at least lean over the rail. Valencia handles the short hop. 
And Sonny Gray has a three up three down second inning. When we come back it'll be Simeon Valencia and Davis. It's a two one game. Doing insurance, it should do more. Go to AAA.com for more details. So it is the top of the third inning. The Angels two, the A's one. He's ready to get back to the Bay Area. A home stand, even though there's a couple of games on the road, so that's okay. He'll be home all next week with. Two in San Francisco, then at home Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Oof. Heads up, Danny Valencia. Hey, on deck hitters better pay attention. Steve Yeager wasn't paying attention many years ago and developed a nice extension for his mask when a bat broke and hit him in the on deck circle. Popped up right side, Crone. Drifts into foul territory. He waits and he's got it. So that's what's coming up. See the home and home with the Giants, then the Pirates, and then the road trip right before the All Star break. Three in Minnesota and four in Houston. And then the All Star break. And these will be at home after the All Star break for a nice long homestand. So. That first one at the Twins is the 4th of July, a Monday afternoon following the Pirates series. First pitch to Valencia is outside. And he's having the fireworks on July the second, which is a Saturday. The Independence Day weekend should be a, a fun weekend of baseball as well as great fireworks at the Coliseum. The Pirates team that has not been able to put it all together. A lot of talented players. Valencia swings and misses one and two. Got a guy named who's this Kutch guy? Yeah. Andrew McCutch. He's good. He is good. Fun to watch. Clint Hurdle, the manager, of course, in America League, America League Rookie of the Year with Kansas City many, many years ago. Breaking ball. It's just a touch outside to Valencia. And the Pirates. 36 and 39. They play. This is what Valencia did last night. First pitch hitting with Chassin. First inning. Coco the walk. Valencia two run home run into the trees in center field. 
Valencia now with 11 home runs. He's driven in 30. Holds up three and two. And there's your aggressiveness and discipline all in one swing. Prepared to swing a, on a fastball if he got it, but able to take a pitch out of the strike zone. That's Jose Bautista, where Valencia learned the leg kick and the aggressiveness at the plate. And Valencia swings and misses. Ball's picked up. Perez tags him. So two outs here in the third, and that is strikeout number five for Santiago. You know the way Perez set up, you had a pretty good idea it's going to be a breaking ball. He set up like a goalie. Because if it was a breaking ball, it was in the dirt, he wanted to block it. And guys are a little bit more casual with fastballs because fastball, with the exception of Santiago today, not really around the plate as much. But a breaking ball, you can see him just set up, especially with two strikes, and want to be prepared if the ball bounces. First pitch strike to Chris Davis. So two walks, five strikeouts from Santiago. He just set up and he knew he wanted it down. He was ready to block it, which he did on the two strikes. And big strike, yeah, especially with the aggressiveness that Valencia is showing when it gets the fastball. <laughs> Chris Davis behind in the count, 0 and 2. Half the people below us behind the screen, that ball hit so hard above us, it went down. Those people got hit in the back. You got to pay attention. You got to, especially with the balls that are coming back hard. Now they're turning around a little bit more. We got to pay attention too. <laughs> well, we got JR or not. Davis drives on right center. Trout on the move. Trout is going to track it down. Right center field. Terrific running catch by Mike Trout. Two on Angels headed to the bottom of the third. California is brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. So the Angels with a two to one lead over the Athletics, bottom of the third inning. Sonny Gray and Hector Santiago. Sonny gave up a couple of runs and three hits in the first. Had a three up, three down inning in the second, so we'll see how he does here against Calhoun, Trout, and Pujols. It's not a shutdown inning, but he needs one. And this needs to be a pitcher's duel. Santiago has figured out the strike zone with his fastball. Sonny needs to shut down the Angels, especially the top part of the batting order. Simeon 
backhand, straightens up, throws out Calhoun. So Marcus Simeon with the shift on, had a range to his right, took care of it. Greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T-Mobile. A starters to beat the Angels in their major league debut. We got three of them. Dylan Overton last night, Barry Zito back in 2000, and Bill Kruger, the left-hander, back in 1983. A's starters to beat the Angels in their major league debut. All lefties, so I guess the Angels have tough time with rookie lefties. That's right, no question. Yeah. You know Dylan Overton, but uh, Bill Kruger is now working for the Mariners on the TV side. And of course, the great Barry Zito. 1 0 to Trout. Trout singled and scored in the first inning. He has eight hits in this series. Trout heads. And his average now up to 310. And he's into the top 10 in hitting. And it's a good curveball. That one down, and it looked good enough that Trout missed it. A couple years ago, Mike Trout hit a home run off of Sonny Gray, and this is the type of pitch he said, I'm going to start throwing him and get a half swing from Trout. And he looked first base like, I'm sorry, that's that's a swing, and he knew it was a swing, but he's asking for help to hope to not have it called a strike. Sonny tried it, started to throw in a little slider outside to Trout. There's the pitch he likes down and in, singled on that pitch inside in his first at bat, but also Holborn in Oakland, a similar pitch inside. Trout is seven for 31 in his career against Sonny Gray. So they've seen each other a lot and they will continue to see each other a lot. Trout's ready, I believe. The payoff pitch, here it is. Huh. And he swung in a pitch in the dirt. So Trout strikes out, second strikeout for Sonny Gray. Well, Albert Pujols, he's been swinging the bat well, and there's one that Sir Kemp gave up. That was a monster, two-run shot. And then last night against Dylan Overton after striking out, he said, you're not going to do it again. And no doubt it, on a fastball down low. So he has homered against the A's 15 times now in his career. 15 of his 574. Well, really, Dylan Overton can say as Albert goes in the Hall of Fame and they put the list of pitchers who gave up the home runs. He said, I'm there. Sure. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I mean, he's not going to say it to anybody else on that list no. unless Alex Rodriguez hits one off him. I think we're done with the Yankees. Done with the Yankees. Yeah. yeah, and next year is supposed to be his last year, so he see what happens. Six, seven games against the Yankees next year. But yeah, that's that's something to tell your grandkids. Yeah, I gave up one to Albert, Hall of Famer. One and two now to Pools. Cap, you notice the Trout. He threw a three-two curveball. You go back to Simmons last inning. He had three and two on him, and he went fastball, fastball. But to Trout, he goes curveball. And I think a lot of times with Sonny's curveball, if he gets three and two, while a hitter might be patient up to that point, you throw him a three-two curveball, you're going to get him swinging out of the strike zone as Trout did. Watch this curveball. See it? Uh, I mean, it's not even close. Yet he was thinking fastball and committed because it looked at least a little bit like a strike when it left his hand. Close pitches, and now it's three and two. Let's see if he throws him a curveball like he did Trout. Here 
comes. Broken bat roller. <laughs> now Camtra knocks it down, but Albert Pujols only running about 50 60 percent, but he's going to have a base hit. And the theory on that with a shift to the left side, give Albert a single to the right side. Alonzo started after it, could not range far enough. Son of was going to be there, and actually, maybe Alonzo should have continued to go after it. He had the only chance with Alcantara shading Albert to pull. So a two out single for Pools, and here's CJ Crone, who had an RBI single in the first inning. First pitch to Crone is fouled straight back. And the Angels are ninth in the American League in run scored. Second to last in home runs hit. A bit of a surprise. They have struck out the fewest times in the American League. I think Sonny Gray would like to see Quinn Walcott call some strikes. Yeah, it's been a little tight. Yeah. In this inning, it's been tight. Very tight. And, and I, I think, too, you, a couple of guys named Trot and Pujols, and those names alone on the back of the uniform make a big difference. And that's fair. I don't think Valencia saw it. Nope. Pujols is going to head for third, and he will make it. And Crone has a double. There's no way Danny Valencia could have seen it because. Watch him. He doesn't react. Yeah, there's just a, a hesitation there. But that situation that if it's not feelable to throw him out, you stop it. It's first and second instead of second and third. And the pesky one at the plate. And all that's happening with two out after a ground ball with a shift with Simeon making the play on Calhoun. Big strikeout to Trout. And now Sonny trying to get the third out with a couple of runners in scoring position. First pitch strike to Juvatella, who had a sacrifice fly in the first inning, knocking in his 26th run. Take a sack fly now. Two outs. Yep. <laughs> I always like those sack flies for two outs. It was blocked by Fegley, although Pujols, Pujols will be making no mad dashes to the plate. That's not going to happen. And the backstop is not that far away from the catching position if the ball does get past Fegley. And this is where the curveball is important pitch for Sonny Gray, but also important for Fegley to show that he can block it, which he is capable. Very athletic to be able to get down and block a good hard curve thrown by Sonny Gray. Close pitch. Oh. Call the ball a little bit inside. So two and one the count. Pujols at third, Crone at second. Valencia dives, can't get it. Simeon on the backhand, his throw bounced. Alonzo has it, side retired. So a good play by Marcus Simeon in the inning, and a couple of runners stranded for the Angels.
22nd Animal Lovers Unite at the Coliseum where fans can bring their dogs to the A's 7.05 p.m. game against the Tampa Bay Rays. A special ticket is required for Bark at the Park presented by Abilderm, Nyla Bone, and Pet Sports. This event sells out annually and limited to tickets. Limited tickets do remain. For information and tickets, visit athletics.com slash bark. Ooh. Who's our camera guy that likes to bring his dog? Stags, Stags loves his dog. Stags, that's right, Stags. He's always there. Probably asked for the day off many weeks in advance. <laughs> Bark at the park. That's a good one. Butler lines a single to left field. Big play by Marcus Simeon. A couple of runners on base. And the one thing he's talking about is using the grass. We've talked about it in the series. But watch as he goes to his right. It allows him to catch and throw with barely even taking any time. And with the Alonzo at first base be able to stretch and handle the low throw or the throw intentionally into the ground. And now he's looking at the different grass texture on the different parts. And Sonny Gray happy with a great play by Marcus Simeon. That would have scored at least one if he gets through two. So the leadoff man on again for the A's. That's the third time in four innings. Okay, I think Clay Wood may have some visiting visitors from the infield saying can you fix the grass I mean normally he says well, how do you want the dirt now he may change it for the grass depending on guys on the left side using the grass to make the short throw oh I thought you were going to say something about bring your dog to the park <laughs> and slash clay wood oh no 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 because no. I, I mean you could look that up <laughs> the bring your dog to the park slash clay wood website <laughs> Is a fun thing to read. <laughs> <laughs> so, Butler back to first. <laughs> and that'll bring up Fegley. Angels lead two to one. Hey, guess who won again today, Ray? I like doing this to you, and you usually get this right when I ask you these questions. Guess who won again today? Got to be Cleveland. There you go. Yeah, See, got to be the tribe. Tribe's hot. We're in unison. The Indians nine, Tigers three. Wow. Final from Detroit. Tigers haven't beaten them this year. Have they? <laughs> they have 0 and 9. They play a lot in the Central against each other as they're in the same division. So the Cleveland Indians have won nine games in a row, and wow. today. They hit four home runs in the fifth inning against wow. Justin Verlander. Four in one inning. So they are rolling along. Well, but with them, it's really their pitching. Yeah, absolutely. And that's yeah. what it's all about for the tribe. Playing great baseball. And they have pitching for sure. Cleveland is 18 and six in the month of June. So right now they have a five and a half game lead over the Royals in the center. Interesting division. Yeah. I thought the one and two. Interesting thing at the beginning of the season, the the experts once again picked, picked the Royals to finish down in the, the division and say, well, wait a minute, they just won the World Series. But I think they had them fourth. Yeah, that didn't make no, no sense to me. I agree. Begley behind in the count, one and two. Santiago at 62 pitches with one out in the fourth inning. He knew he was a real sleeper for the Indians this year is the right hander Josh Tomlin. We've seen him a little bit. He's nine and one. And he's probably their fifth starter. <laughs> Yeah, Carrasco is at the top of the list. Yeah, Salazar, Carrasco, Salazar. terrific. Kluber's pitching well yeah. again. Bauer's pitching well. Bauer wasn't in the rotation to begin the season. Upset that he's going to the bullpen, then back in the rotation. Terry Francona is a good manager. Two two to Fegley checks his swing. No swing. Hmm. But there's every year for the Indians to make a significant trade to get a hitter. This yeah. would be the year. 
Begley very strong able to hold up the bat without following through. Cop, I think maybe they were so thrilled to see the Cavs one million people supporting them with a parade. They said man that's what I'm saying. Yeah that's why now you got yeah. a little looks good people feeling good. Shot hooked down the left field line just foul. Bangs off the side wall. You know Michael Jordan played with the White Sox maybe LeBron <laughs> probably could. <laughs> He's big man. A big strike zone. Well just the hook and maybe there the check swing look for pitch and got it just a little too quick. Take that right field stroke again is there's a big gap in right center. A double help the A's score their only run of the game. And the pitch is high and it's a walk. Okay, one of the things in talking to Josh Fegley, and I think you talk to any catcher, really any position player, but I think especially as a catcher, because it's all about timing. The first thing they say, my job is to catch. And if I don't play every day, it makes it hard to hit anyway, but you always work on your catching. You can hit against coaches, maybe not the same anywhere close to hitting against major league pitching, but Think about Josh Fegley. He is prepared behind the plate. He can throw, block balls in the dirt, handle pitching staff, and contributes also with the bat. First pitch to Alonzo is outside. And Alonzo had an RBI ground out in the second inning. Alonzo now three for 13 in this series. Quick throw to second, and Simmons has to leap high to get it. So Perez is three for three. He's thrown to first, he's thrown to third, and he's through to second. Trying. He's got them all. These are all pre planned plays. Of course, with the shifts, that means the middle infielder, one of them, is close to the bag anyway. So Alonzo, good count for him, 2 0. And that one is going to get through on the right field of base hit. Billy Butler will hold up at third. Calhoun has a terrific arm in right field. So the A's have the bases loaded with one out. Now Ron Washington waiting as long as he could. Had a pretty good idea. He was not going to be able to send Billy Butler because Calhoun has the gold glove arm. So Wash came down the line and finally put up the stop sign for Butler. So Alcantara, who has the speed, can make contact this time. Run at third, his first at bat, struck out on four pitches. First pitch, swing and a miss. Not to state the obvious, but he absolutely Good. has to put the ball in play. I agree. I agree. Not only in this situation, but the type of player. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, more f the latter part. You're right. He is extremely fast. And now he's behind in the count, 0 and 2. Well, he shortened his swing a couple of nights ago when he got to start and hit a ball up the line first base and ended up beating it out. And that just contact is the key for him just to put the ball in play because it is tough to double him up. And I think unless it goes up the middle corner infielders may go to the plate if there is contact. And Thiago kicks 0 2 pitch. In the air foul well foul down the right field line. He's fan there with the gold jersey, but a red glove, <laughs> which really is illegal, right? Doesn't your glove have to be like yeah. a, a, the leather color or a brown color or the color of your uniform? Uniform, right? That's that the, yeah. the still the rule. Yeah, the Angels uh, can use red gloves. Yeah. I think uh, Santana used one when he play, pitched here. It's like three calls in the outside corner. So two away here in the fourth inning. Backdoor curveball and just a matter of time before he was going to get one. Looking fastball. 
Couldn't pull the trigger, that's no contact. So now it's up to Coco Crisp. Coco a walk and a strikeout. Well, the A's need a big hit here. Butler, Fegley, Alonzo are your runners. Coco in the air, left center, hit pretty well. Nava, Trout, that baby's gone. Grand slam, Coco Crisp. And it's 5-2, to two, the A's lead. How about that? Couldn't ask for a better two-out hit. Third career slam for Coco. What a great shot to left center. Just almost like Chris Davis. Just spreading the gap in left center. This one, though, traveled out. Huge. Great two out hitting. Alcantara has to feel a lot better. Second slam for the Athletics this year. Third for Coco. The first, a walk off slam by Chris Davis. This one as big. Oh, what a series for Coco Crisp. Hector Santiago, right as the ball left the ballpark, he slapped his hand on the ground about four times. And that one's hit deep to left. And that baby's gone. Simeon homers. As the A's are teeing off again, it's now six to two. Man, is that sweet sound. Another two strike hit. Charles Nagy out. 14th home run for Marcus Simeon. And the third time the A's have gone back to back. Davis a couple of times. Coco with a first pitch hitting fastball. Left center. I think he knew it was gone. The outfielders did. The A's were hoping, and it cleared the wall. Coco likes it, and boy, do the A's like it. Oh, there's exactly what you said with Santiago beating, because he had the strikeout and really struck out Coco in the second inning. Similar situation with runner at third base and two outs, but this time Coco got it. So a five run inning for the A's. They lead six to two. As Valencia hits. 14 home runs for your shortstop. It's pretty impressive for Marcus Simmons, especially with his defense. Two and one the count. Valencia has walked and struck out. Inside corner, two and two. So seven home runs in the series for the A's. So Kemp, I think the ball is carrying quite well today, although these have not needed much help. And just a nice, easy swing with a couple of strikes for Marcus Simeon. And he was checking to see if he hooked it too much and hooked it foul instead. Stayed fair by plenty. Slowly hit toward third, scooped up by Marte. His throw is just in time to get Valencia side retired. A's score five. They get a grand slam. From Coco Crisp, and right after that, solo shot by Marcus Simeon. Major damage done by the Athletics as we go to the bottom of the fourth. It's the A6 and the Angels 2.
Chris with a grand slam, 6 2. He's lead the Angels. Simeon with the solo shot. And as we pointed out earlier, Marcus Simeon hit two against Santiago back in early April. So add another one, plus he had one last year. So Simeon makes a great play defensively to save at least one, maybe two runs, and then goes back to back with Coco. Well, Simeon now has five home runs against the Angels this year. Good pitch there, 0 and 2 to Jeffrey Marte. What about the strike zone now? <laughs> that was one that wasn't called a little bit earlier. So maybe it's boosting up a little bit. So Sonny Gray with some breathing room for Run Lee. On a hot day here in Anaheim. Nava to follow and then Carlos Perez. Breaking ball outside. Rangers are leading the Red Sox three to nothing in the sixth inning. Just underway in Seattle. Mariners with a two to one lead over the Cardinals in the second. Going for the three game sweep of St. Louis. Rangers and the Red Sox, that's the rubber game of that series. In the air to left field, Davis goes back. He's going to have room, and Chris Davis makes the catch. Ace fans, make your 2016 insurance MLB All-Star Game ballot green and gold at athletics.com on your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone. A lot of guys to vote for. You can select Ace, like Danny Valencia, Chris Davis, Josh Reddick. Vote up to 35 times. You can vote today, vote tomorrow, vote at athletics.com slash vote. And you better vote fast because the game, if my recollections collect, two weeks from Tuesday, right? So baseball next weekend, right. uh, next week at home, and then next week on the road. And yeah, the it, 12th of July. So in San Diego, two weeks from Tuesday. So the voting's going to end pretty soon. So vote now. 35 times. Got a lot of good guys to vote for. Really coming on strongly down the stretch before the All-Star break. And he's in the midst of 20 consecutive games played prior to the All-Star break. Last year it worked out nicely for Sonny Gray and mm -hmm. Stephen Vogt because the A's ended in Cincinnati, ended the first half, and are in Cleveland, and they just busted to Cincinnati. Not a bus like a regular bus. This was like a nice bus, like a party bus. Well, according to Sonny pitching today, he would pitch Friday against the Pirates, and then okay. Wednesday of the next week, which would be against Minnesota. So, unless they brought him back, because there's no off days, so I assume it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Thursday. So be no, no Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So Friday, Wednesday, and then we'll get two starts after today before the break. It's a long time off though between Wednesday and the following Friday. Yeah, what can you do? Yeah. Simeon playing right up the middle. Goes to a knee on the backhand and throws out Nava. So, props to the shift there. Yes, and they also got Calhoun. Simeon did last inning, playing similar position. Just past Sonny Gray, suck his glove up. Fortunately, got out of the way. Hard hit ball, nothing to show for it for Nava. So Carlos Perez steps up. So Perez popped out to third in the second inning. San Diego's had an all-star game before. I remember they had one at Jack Murphy Stadium. I'm guessing it was 
1992, maybe. Much different ballpark. Much the middle. Nice play. Now Cantra throw to first. Got him. Hmm. Heck of a play by Aris Mendy Alcantara. Nicely done and a three up, three down inning for Sonny Gray. Sunday, July the 17th, the race starts on the field at the Coliseum, finishes with a post-race celebration in the parking lot. All participants receive a technical race t-shirt, a ticket to that day's game, and free parking with a portion of the proceeds benefiting the AIDS Community Fund. Run to athletics.com slash playball 5K to register. 5K, how long is that? is that? How many miles is that, 5K? Let's see, 26 miles is a marathon. 5K is probably too long for me. Yeah, it's a little less than five miles. Two still too long. <laughs> you ain't lying. <laughs> Meet I'll, you at the finish line. I'll ride a bike. That's right. Yeah. Taxi cab. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Take a taxi to the finish line. No, good it's score. Fun, though. Yeah, People I, will have a good yeah, time doing that, yeah. especially when you leave and finish right at the, yeah. right at the ballpark. You now you have a ticket and a t shirt. You get. Let's get some good grub. July 17th. That's going to be a great sunny day, probably. So one and one the count to Chris Davis, Butler to follow, and then Smolinski. After Santiago back out there. And the swing and a miss, one and two, change up at 80 miles an hour. The thing about the game of baseball, especially hitting, is a game of adjustments. And the one thing pitchers can do in scouting reports and all the advanced work and show certain things about hitters, and you constantly have to make adjustments. Marte throw is high, but Crone tags Davis, one out. Got a contra up the middle, and he has been up to plate twice with runners on base, but defensively a great play and a strong throw. After the dive to his right, it took a base hit away and up quickly and showing a very strong arm. So Darren Bush can work extra with him just to make contact, utilize a great speed because defensively he can do it. Billy Butler singled and scored in the fourth inning. A grand slam by Coco Crisp. Well, Yonder Alonso hit the base hit the right field. You could hear the, the groans in the stands. Butler not able to score, and they were excited. Because it took a two out slam for Coco to bring him in. Ninety 
pitches for Santiago. And that one is off the plate, and it's another walk. So that is walk number four. With no activity in the bullpen, you have to think maybe Mike Sosha said to Santiago before he started, I need some Ooh, length. Boy. Well, here's the deal, Ryan. In this series, the Angels bullpen has thrown 14 and two thirds innings. Hmm. We don't need to tell you that that's a lot. Their starters have thrown 12 and a third. And I say 12 and a third, not counting today, yeah. going into the first three games of the series. So there's been more bullpen work than starter work in the first three games. And that's almost five innings per game from the bullpen. That's a lot. So it, it, it's not even, it's almost like, when you look at that graphic, the only number that really matters is that first one. Absolutely. I mean, how the bullpen did, right. how successful they were. Okay, but the the point mm. is, is, they're overworked yeah. in a big way. And you can say, as relievers, and they would always say, "No, we like to work, but yeah. eventually it's going to catch up. You just can't throw that many innings, expect to get the quality outings from them." Lincecum three innings, Weaver four and two thirds, Chassin four and third. <laughs> kind of reminds us of the August in uh, what 2013 maybe when never A's went to Detroit and faced four their four best, and not one got out of the fifth inning. And this is for the season as far as average. Hmm. Length of start. And then foul to the screen. Two and two the count to Smolinski. Well, Bob Melvin last night heading back to hotel kind of turned around, looked at Kurt Young, the A's pitching coach, and said, Hey, Kurt, Sunday's got nine tomorrow. So even Bob wants sure. to make sure that he's not overworking his bullpen. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the A's guys have worked yeah. a lot as well, not anything like the Angels. And you know, there were guys last night that Bob Melvin was not going to use. Very high, shallow left center. Trout and Nava come together. And Trout will have it. I always like to, have to think about a manager says to the bullpen, you guys stay in the dugout with me today. Telling the starting pitcher, you're in there for the duration no matter what. And, you know, obviously that was the time before pitch counts really existed. And I think you, you get a little bit scared whenever you start looking at the pitch count. and. Starting to see it rise a little bit too much. And it's not unusual for a manager and a pitching coach to, they may have a guy or two, there may be a guy almost every game now where you're saying only in an emergency. Mm -hmm. Hit pretty well the right, but room for Calhoun. Tegley is retired, and so are the A's in the top of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth coming up. A6, Angels 2.
versus Giants games of 2016 at the Oakland Coliseum when the Cross Bay Rivals square off on Wednesday and Thursday next week. The A's look to continue their winning ways against the Giants, having captured two of the last three season series. These energy showdowns are always some of the most popular games of the year, so get your tickets right now. Get them today at athletics.com slash tickets. They've been playing each other since interleague started in 1997. Every year, the A's and Giants have played as your regional rival. It starts in spring training, the Bay Bridge Series and exhibition, the final three before the regular season and into the regular season. Simmons leading it off, followed by Calhoun and Trout here. Fifth. Oh, been a lot of, lot of good moments between those two teams in the Bay Bridge series. This year, four games. Okay, I want to say the A's lead the all time series 54 to 52, hmm. I believe is the number. If we don't know for sure, we'll find out tomorrow when the notes come out. Mike Selleck wasn't the best at uh, putting out A's notes. So the Giants will also have the tally. Three and one to Simmons, who grounded out. Daniel Migden tomorrow night at AT&T Park. Simmons grounded out to third in his first at bat. So Migden and Graveman taking some swings the last couple days. How did they do? Saw so Migden and Graveman taking some swings the last couple. Days. <laughs> so there's your pitching matchups. Migden and Samarja, an eight game winner tomorrow night. Graveman and Albert Suarez who's pitching in Matt Kane's spot. Then Jake Peavy and Sean Manaya. Sean Manaya scheduled to come back from the disabled list. And then on Thursday, Madison Bumgarner and Dylan Overton. So that's your the matchups for the A's Giants series coming up tomorrow night. But that three of the four games against the Giants be rookies. That's right. Good experience. Yeah. Now for Sunday Gray leading uh, walking the you know, hitter in the fifth inning and he's hitting ninth that summer is now back to top the batting order. So you got to be careful here. Strike one and one to Cole Calhoun who singled and scored in the first and grounded to short in the third. Maybe it's taken Sonny Gray 77 pitches to get loose. It's fastball still sharp. He's got a walk and two strikeouts so far, giving up five hits. Trout to follow and then Pujols. So, as we always seem to say, This becomes an important hitter. To center. Coco goes back, now comes in a couple steps. So Calhoun is retired. Let me ask you a question. Sitting up here, you look at center field, does it look like the center field is elevated. It looks like so Coco's kind of. St I mean, it, for some reason, the, the, just the way you look at it, it looks like Coco's eight feet tall. You know, when he center runs field. in, he's running down. You know, I mean, up. really, it just has Maybe that. Maybe it's the grass. Yeah, it, the it's so, the grass. something that just looks like he's way taller than he actually is. But that's just the perception. I mean, the field is very close to the stands, and ball is carrying well, at least for the A's in this series. 
Trout takes a fastball inside. Trout has singled and scored, and he has struck out. He is eight for 15 in this series. There's a strike. Tried to hold up, couldn't do it. So Quinn Walcott point at Mike Trout, and that means it's a strike because you <laughs> went around. And plus, you can't <laughs> ask the first base umpire this time. I did it quickly. Strike two call, one and two, 94 miles an hour. Now speaking of quickly, one out in the inning, runner at first base, if a ground ball is hit, you have to make sure you get one. Because you try to turn two with Trout running, it's tough to double him up. Simmons, the runner at first. Slowly hit. Out at second on the first count. Early on top. But they get the lead man. It's Simmons. He's out. So here's Pujols. Just to the right of Simeon and just a good throw to Alcantara. Alcantara finished the throw to first base just in case. But having to move a couple of steps to the right enabled the runner to get on Alcantara pretty quickly. Pujols has hit a fly ball to right field and he has singled. I don't think of any lineup in the American League. In most lineups, you're three and four hitters, or in today's case, you're two and three hitters. I'm talking about Trout and Pujols. There's always a couple hitters that are, but it seems like with the Angels, it's their lineup is really all about those two guys. Mm -hmm. Whereas exactly. if you can get through those two guys, yeah. you, you feel pretty good. It's not a real long lineup. Which, and I think that's yeah. part of the problem for the Angels. And when we say long lineup, we basically guys that can do damage down toward the back mm -hmm. end. And right now the Angels don't really have yeah. that. Yeah, it enables a pitcher, catcher, to pitch carefully in certain situations. Yep, that's exactly right. Because unless the guys around those, I mean, you just have to really pick what you're going to do, who you're going to face. And, and I think, as we saw last night, we're going overtime. See, you know, Trout was complaining about a pitch, and Albert Pujols looked at the bench and said, "It's okay." To Mike Sosha, he thought it was low. He said it to Quinn Walcott, and then obviously he was hearing it from the dugout. He wants to keep his manager there. So strike two and one. It's different right now. The strike zone is, and that one's hitting the right field. That's a base hit. And Trout will easily make it to third. So Pujols, with that shift on in the right side of the diamond, completely open. He's got a couple of hits that way today. And remember, he, can, he really can't run much. Yeah. And I wonder, Ray, tell me if, if I'm off base here. Is it possible that the home plate umper may have said, I may have missed it? He could have. Because and cool. Albert says, you know what? Yeah. Yeah. He, he admitted it. Yeah. I, I don't know that that happened, but is that a possibility? That is maybe? a possibility that he could have said it. And then when Albert looked back to Mike Sosha, maybe he was saying then, too, I've already taken care of it. Exactly. I, I've complained. You know, we don't need to hear it from the bench even more. Don't make it worse. Here's Crone. First pitch is low to C.J. Crone, who has singled and doubled. I mean, he has knocked in a run. You know, one thing about the closeness of these dugouts, you can bark a little bit. Let's not bark at the park. You're just barking in the dugout. <laughs> you know, but up. but yeah, you can do it, and they can hear it. Whether it's a third base umpire or the home plate umpire on the Angel side, Valencia grabs it, and it's fair. And Valencia is just going to trot on over. Crone says it hit my foot. 
Valencia is going to take care of it. And he flips to Alonzo, and that's the end of the inning. Mike Sosh is coming out. And Crone can't believe it. Trout standing right there. Quinn Walcott says it didn't hit your foot, and it was the third base umpire, Mike DeMiro, who said fair ball. Which means that DeMiro is not going to overturn the home plate umpire. It missed it. It missed it. I think I think Crone thought it was going to go foul, so he stayed at the plate. And then once it was called fair, he said it hit my foot, but I think it bounced in front. And, and we well, that they I'm not sure that was a fair ball. Yeah. I was surprised that they called it fair. It did not look fair. But yeah, it is not something you can review. So whether it hit his foot, I don't know. But well, well, they're, they're, they're going to they're say it didn't hit his foot. So this is not going to sit well with the Angels, but I'm not sure there's a whole lot they can do about it. Nothing. So it's going to be a ground out, and it's going to be a couple of runners stranded. How about that? So sixth inning coming up, 6-2, A's lead. Hits on the ground to the shortstop. Half the clock in center field. Said 24 seconds. Help us out, Blue. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're really. It's supposed to get down to 10 before he even thinks about it. So an interesting ending to the bottom of the fifth inning. And so it goes for the Angels. Is kind of right. What? Do you know the the the. Clock operator did what he's supposed to, waited to see what the final judgment's going to be before he started the clock. But Santiago got out quickly. Walcott said, "Let's go." And that should not happen. Quick 0-2 to Mende Alcantara. Alcantara has struck out twice. Once swinging, once looking. After Santiago into the sixth inning. He has had just one three up, three down inning. That was the third. So it has not been easy for him, but if nothing else, he's given his manager some innings. Kentra just got a piece of that one. He's with six hits in the game. In fact, both teams with six hits. There has not been an error in the game. But the ace with the long ball. 
And there's a base hit for Alcantara. High fastball up and away, and he hits it hard into right field. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, delivers everything you have come to expect and more. Watch every out of market game live in HD on over 400 supported devices. It includes a free subscription to AdMap Premium, the number one app for live baseball. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Here's Coco Crisp, grand slam in the fourth inning. So Coco in this series is five for 11. And he's knocked in six runs. He has scored six runs. He's walked a couple of times. He's got a couple of doubles. So you're saying he likes it out here? He's been doing some major damage. And here, Chris Davis. Go from the area, spend some time down here. Keep an eye on Alcantara. He is a major base dealing threat. <laughs> yeah, it didn't take long for Coco Crisp after Alcantara struck out. Right into the wheelhouse, and at least he's smart enough to do it with the right hand, not his throwing hand. Santiago a little bit upset, but thinking about the importance of his left hand pounding the ground with his right hand. So one and two to Crisp with like Simeon waiting in the on deck circle. Runner goes, pitches high, throw to second base. Not in time. Stolen base for Alcantara. He was thrown out the other night. Yeah, Bandy got him with a strong, perfect throw. First move, and he is fast. Still a close play. Perez made a strong throw, and Mark Carlson at second did not make the call immediately until. The finish, the completion of the slide. There's the tag, but staying on the bag all the time was Alcantara. Full count. And he's holding your breath when you see those head first slides yeah. and you see those fingers going in there. There's usually a the baseball spike of the second baseman or shortstop. That one's driven toward Trout. Trout going back. He's going to circle around and he makes the catch. Alcantara hustles back to tag. He's going to try for third and he'll make it. So a long out for Coco Crisp and it does advance a runner, but two outs. Well, not many could do what Alcantara just did. And that is go halfway to third, get back to second, and tag <laughs> and get safely into third. That was pretty good. So get into third. Let Marcus top a ball. Something can happen with a couple of outs. And unlike Albert Pujols at third base, any sort of a wild pitch that's close enough to the plate might see Alcantara try it. Marcus Simeon, a home run today. Strikeout, foul out, home run. So Simeon now has 14 home runs on the year. And that's quick. And no hesitation either in Trout with a strong throw just a little bit offline. Well, Simeon 14 home runs this year. Last year he hit 15 in 155 games. This year so far 14 in 75 games. Now maybe last year and all those games and all the errors he made he was thinking about the errors when he's trying to hit. Maybe this year. But he, he knows that he has to separate too. And last year is his rookie season. 15 home runs for a shortstop is great. And even better this year and his play both sides of the baseball. Improving dramatically. Just a great kid. You see great player. Just everything good about him. Pops a foul down the right field line. 
hundred and fifteen pitches for Santiago. He's one away from his season high. Tough hop for Marte. He handles it. His throw is high. And Crone was able to tag Simeon on the very high throw. So a pretty good play by the first baseman, C.J. Crone. Bob Melvin may want to take a look at it. Everybody on hold. Slide. It's close. Yeah, they're going to take a look at it. Bob Melvin said, let's look at it. He definitely tagged him. It was just a matter of watch the foot. And that's big because it's a run. Look, after we've talked about, we see guys slide head first into first base. There is a time if you could just drop down because the only chance Crone has is to tag him. Did he get him on the left hand before the? Yeah, that's the question. That's the Did question. He tag yeah. him on the hand or miss the hand and then the chest. He missed a hand and tagged him on the chest. It may have been after his foot touches the bag. The left hand or the left forearm. Well, in there. that case, the hand was already past him by the time he brought the tag down. So called out on the field. Talking but about, it is a big call. You're talking about the Cleveland Indians and Roberto Alomar, who played Gold Glove second base for the Tribe. Call him out. They're going to stay with the call. So the A's do not score. They strand a runner. Bottom of the six coming up. Six two Athletics. Series coming up. We're looking back at some A's moments. This was June 26 of 2004. Marco Scudero with a walk-off single, and the A's won the game eight to seven. And the crazy part of that game was in the top of the ninth, the eight or the Giants scored four runs against Octavio Dotel to tie it. But then Marco Scudero won it for the A's 2004. Marco probably had more walk-offs for the A's than anybody. Maybe not named Matt Stairs. Maybe Stairs had a bunch, but Matt Marco was Super Mario, Super Marco against a lot of teams. Well, there's not a lot of players, very very few players who you could say are fan favorites <laughs> in both ballparks. Right. Marco Scudero definitely falls into that category. Was very popular with the A's and did some pretty decent things for the Giants. The stunned look on the faces of all the Yankees, starting with Joe Torre down when he hit the walk-off three-run shot down the foul pole, on the foul pole down the left field line, front door cut fastball. And to see players, staff walk out after that, saying, "You got to be kidding me." 
But he did it, and one of the biggest. So Victor Martinez is a good friend of his. And see, they still talk about it. Two and one now to Johnny Giovatella. Well, the Royals had to slow down the Astros today. The Royals beat Houston six to one behind Ian Kennedy. So that breaks the Astros seven game winning streak. Right at Simeon. Giovatella is retired. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. And the Astros playing great. After scoring 26 runs in the first two games of that series against the Royals, they get slowed down today by Kennedy scoring just one time. How long do you think it will take Jose Altuve to live down his stumble around second before he got to second? He's going for a triple end of the cycle, and he approached second base and did a header. Yeah. Had to stop at second, crawl back to bag. I say about as long as it takes him <laughs> to, to hold up the American League batting leaders, yeah. where he is now first. Altuve hitting 348. Yeah. And he laughed it off. Oh, yeah. His teammates will let him know about it. Those Astros will be right here in Anaheim tomorrow night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Open up the three game series. Rangers still leading the Red Sox six to one that game in the bottom of the seventh. Close pitch to Jeffrey Marte. Well, against the Rangers you just mentioned uh, his tough inning was the sixth two hitter through five innings today a couple of runs in the first but since then. Just three hits. Line foul into the seats. Marte a strikeout and a fly ball to left field. One for 12 in the series. Seven pitches for Sonny Gray. Maybe a cross up. Just didn't look <laughs> quite right. Well, Fegley has said, we've seen this a couple of times where. He said, I just forgot what the pitch was. That's not that's not good, especially with nobody at second. But he admitted, I said, no, you never admit that. Don't ever say that. Just say it was a cross up. Don't blame yourself. Valencia charges, gets the big hop. And Marte is now one for 13 in the series. Two outs for Daniel Nava. It's hard to believe that Sonny Gray has not won a game since April 22nd. Mm -hmm. That's over two months. Yeah. Never ever imagined that I would say that. Nine starts since his last win. Now, of course he did spend a little bit of time on the disabled list. He has pitched pretty well since coming back from the disabled list. And he's been good today. About to throw pitch number 100. Bob Melvin, Kurt Young would like to see one more go seven innings and mix and match the last two innings to try to get the win. But we'll see because the A's are playing straight through until the All Star break. Sonny, is it just his fourth start, fifth since making a return from the disabled list? A little bit high, one and one to Nava, who has grounded out twice once to first and once to short. Shift is on. Good fastball there. In fact, it was by Nava.
Sonny's pitch count high this year is 114. 5 3 and 2 counts today with 1 3 and 0 oh doesn't help. That's just a lot of pitches thrown. And maybe a tighter strike zone earlier, but loosening up a little bit. And he has not struck out a lot of guys, yeah. so it's just there's a lot of extra pitches yeah. today. So you have a great ball strike ratio, but only one walk. Playing Nava to go the other way in the outfield. Huge gap in right center field. And now full count. Here's the gap. Hmm. So there's Sonny's last inning trying to get through it. 3 2 pitch fouled at the plate. Humid like Cincinnati, but right. it is warm. Yeah, the warmth is definitely humidity is not there. Strike three called. Got him looking. So Sonny Gray gets strikeout number three to end the sixth inning. Seventh inning coming up. 6 2 A's lead. Looking back on June 26, 2010. Remember the Pirates are coming to town this weekend. Remember this? Throwback unis. Kurt Suzuki home run. Bonnie Moore was in the booth. That was a dinger. That was a dinger. How about those jackets, huh? That's right. Whew. It's a good look. Steve Wooson at yesterday taking the orders for the uh, throwback jerseys. Uh, Melvin checking in with Sonny Gray. Here's the numbers 106 pitches and. We'll see if the A's indeed go to the bullpen. Uh, somebody's loosening. Angels have gone. Salas is the, uh, the reliever. Fernando Salas. And Rodriguez for the A's. So Salas to face Valencia here in the seventh inning. And Danny Valencia first pitch swing and skies went to shallow right. And Calhoun fighting it makes the catch. And Calhoun he's got the glasses on. 
And it looks like he needed them all the way. Giovatella out, but it was the right fielder Calhoun coming in. You know, the, the Oakleys that guys wear the wraparound, they're, they're great glasses, but they do not sometimes have the, the real UV to block the sun. 34th appearance for the veteran Fernando Salas. He pitched in game two of this series. And he gave up the home Big run one. to Chris Davis Big one. on Friday. So Davis will try to get him again. Steve Vucinich had the picture of the the Big Five. As Santiago's lines, that was not very good. He did go six, and I think it's probably him saying to Mike Sosha and Charles, Nate, I'm going to go back out because mm -hmm. you need to save the bullpen. I've given up the slam and the, another home run. So I'll run back out there. So he does at least go six. But remember the, the five starters the A's had under Billy Martin. They all pitched like 30 complete mm -hmm. games. Picture was taken here, but <clears throat> those are the uniforms going to be thrown at. Worn in the throwback, and Steve Wilson was asking each player, "How do you want to wear your uniform? Here's a high socks, sure. here's low socks, you know." So he's he's taken the order, but it should be a nice looking uniform. There's Steve Vucinich, the you, Godfather. Can you sign my hat? Sure. Let's see, what's my name, Vuce? Just sign it, Vuce. That autograph, I mean, that's worth something. That hat just went up in value. Or town. <laughs> well, depending on how you look at it, he is the godfather. <laughs> but that picture that was on SI, the cover of the five mm -hmm. starting pitchers, who said he had a picture of it, he said it was taken right here. In the clubhouse before it was remodeled and actually downsized. And he said, see if you can see the name at the top whose locker it was. Frank Sencheck, equipment Senchuk. manager. Right. And there is the way it should be, right? Yeah. Rick Langford, I think, had 29, 30 complete games. <laughs> Michael Norris, Steve McCaddy. And Chris Davis swings at an off speed pitch. He strikes out for the second time. But I have to ask Boos if he actually signed his real name or maybe some others. My guess? I don't know. Probably his own. I think he I was guess. probably pleased that there were two people in the in the stadium out here early and one of them asking for his autograph. Liam Hendricks a good job last night. Sonny Gray six innings today. Looks like he might be finished for the afternoon. So here's Billy Butler. Butler hits a high fly ball toward right. Mm -hmm. Looks like Fernando Salas is going to have an easy inning. And he does. Seventh inning stretch from the big A. That's coming up. 6 2, the A's lead.
fan know it all with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Toyota. It's tonight at 6 p.m. on CSN Bay Area. All the A's Angels highlights and clubhouse reaction and all the highlights from a busy day around Major League Baseball. And don't forget about NASCAR in Sonoma. Henry Wolford, Fallon Smith will have it again at 6 o'clock and also at 10.30 on CSN Bay Area. Well, the A's trying to finish off the four game sweep of the struggling Angels. It's 6 2, bottom of the seventh inning. And Fernando Rodriguez comes in. So, Fernando Rodriguez on in relief of Sonny Gray, who went six innings. And Sonny needs a little help from his bullpen. See if he can pick up his fourth win of the year. Rodriguez. Pitched on Friday night in game two of the series. Now Fernando rested because he didn't pitch last night, but uh, you're right, a couple of nights ago when Sir Camp started. Quick hook, and uh, Fernando came in, pitched two and a third innings. And the bullpen did a great job to get through that game and ended up winning it. So it's nice to be going for a sweep, something that is very rare for three games, but let's see a four game sweep. Tough to do yeah, tough to do on the road. Mike Selleck with a note. Last time the A's swept a four game series on the road was in Cleveland 2012. Yep. Last time they swept a four game series at home was 2014 against Toronto. But it is not easy to do. And a little work yet to be done. There's Carlos Perez stepping in. Perez, Simmons, and Calhoun here in the bottom of the seventh. White Sox beat Toronto 5-2. to two. I'll give you that score. To give you an update on Chris Sale. Popped up. Center of the diamond. It's going to be the second baseman, Alcantara, who grabs it. And he's called out. He was going to... Just flip it to Simeon to throw it around the horn and he dropped it, but it isn't out. Mike Sosha up on the top step. And Ben Walcott, who made the call. Trying to take a look. No. Caught it. At one time that would have been an error. Last yeah, they year. had a little stretch there where Last that, was, year. That, that was not good. Small glove, he was taking it out of his glove. So one out, and here's Simmons. So Chris Sale in that game, you got the win. He is now 13 and 2. Chris Sale. He's got to be your All-Star oh, yeah. game starter, huh? If, if he's eligible. It's like Randy Johnson starting and John Cruck turning his helmet around because <laughs> he's batting left-handed. Sale. He, Sale's not a good guy that you want to try to face if you're a left hander So Sale gets his 13th win. A couple guys going for their 12th win. Kershaw tonight against the Pirates. He's 11 and 1. Johnny Cueto for the Giants is pitching today against the Phillies. He's 11 and 1. So the A's will not face Cueto. Heads up off the glove of Rodriguez. He reached up and I really think he got a little leather on it. Not much. Not enough. That's it. Was a shot to center, center field. field. Here comes the top of the order in Cole Calhoun. Get out of the way. You follow through, and as Fernando did, put the glove up, and think, thankfully didn't hit him in his body someplace. So Calhoun 
in his fourth at bat. Singled in the first, grounded out in the third, hit a fly ball to center field in the fifth. He scored a run. Rodriguez first pitch moves off the plate to Calhoun. Trout to follow. Shift is on for Calhoun. Valencia, the lone man on the left side of the diamond. Sonny Gray, 106 pitches, and Pep, I got him for two, four, six, seven, three, and two counts, one, three, and no count. And if you ever want to get your pitch count up, that's how you do it. And, you know, it's really probably equivalent to another inning uh, for Sonny. Any pitcher that has that many three two counts, or three ball counts, and really adds to the pitch count, especially with not a lot of strikeouts. Yeah, it was kind of a strange outing. I mean, his numbers are good, mm -hmm. but I don't know that he was real sharp. It's AJ after. Simmons with his lead at first. And that one in there for strike. So three and one the count. Box just down to our left. So now a full count. See if Simmons takes off. He does not. And the ball is rolled foul down the right field line. One thing about Mike, Mike Sochet, his managerial career with the Angels, he has never held back. He feels Trunner can get a good jump. Go. He'll, he'll have him run. <laughs> exactly. And get, better to have a runner in scoring position than at first base. Maybe Fernando's delivered to the plate quick enough. And of course, Fegley has an outstanding arm. The Angels are down by four. Could play into that, but he's never really wanted to look at the score and hold his runners back. Simmons was not running, and he's not running this time. And the ball is belted to center. Coco's going back. Coco in front of the wall. He's got just enough room, and he makes the catch. Oh, a long out for the second out here in the seventh inning. If you ever want to have a hitter hit the ball, just keep it in the park. That's a place to have him hit it. And he pulls the ball. He has power. And there's a difference. Put ball against Kendall Gray, but just to the left of the, the sign and right center. And this time, just too far to the left on a line drive. Stayed in the park. So now with two outs and a runner at first, Trout will step up. That's Bedrosian joining Octor. First pitch to Trout is a strike on the outside corner. Trout today, single and scored in the first, struck out in the third, reached on a fielder's choice in the fifth. toward left center Coco's back Coco's at the wall and Coco leaps and it is gone 
Six to four. So home run number 16 for Trout. Well, 16 and 52, and he's so quick, especially in that zone, down and in. I tell you, there's nobody that handles a pitch in any better than Mike Trout. He just proved it with that shot to left center. Coco climbed the wall, and he talked about the one last night that Trout hit. He thought about doing this, but he thought he had a better chance to catch it without climbing the wall. This time he did, but it was too far, and it was over the head and over the fence. And it is just the seventh inning, boy, and it's all of a sudden a bullpen gets active. And that would be expert. That's the fourth home run Trout has hit against the A's so far this year, and this is game number 10. First <laughs> pitch to Pujols. Looks like maybe a little cut fastball and a good one. So two run homer for Trout, 6 4 game. Just have to wonder from Bob Melvin's standpoint who he is factoring in if not being available. Valencia will grab it, knows he's got plenty of time. And that will do it. But a two run homer for Trout, so eighth inning coming up. It's now 6 to 4. Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group LLC. When it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. He's now lead six to four with a two-run shot by Mike Trout. Cam Bedrosian comes on to make this appearance for. The Angels, he's been a workhorse for the Angels, and the A's have seen him several times. Right now, he's trying to keep zeros on the board. The A's need to add on after seeing their four run lead reduced to two runs, thanks to Mike Trout against Fernando Rodriguez. He's good, especially against the A's. I don't think he needs help with this sunny Sunday day game. So Bedrosian to face Smolinski, Fegley, and Alonzo. Bedrosian pitched in game two on Friday. Inning in a third and 17 pitches. 
On Friday for Cam Bedrosian. And this one's popped up on the infield. Hamilton Simmons charges. There's a whole bunch of red jerseys there, and Simmons is the guy who grabs it. Probably a good choice since he's a gold lover. <laughs> After your point about Fernando Salas, the overworked bullpen, this past inning, last inning, the, the seventh, one, two, three inning, he only threw eight pitches. Mm -hmm. So Mike Sosha, who saw him pitch, told you his sixth the other night, left him in the game, gave up a three run home run to Chris Davis. So today, takes him out after one successful inning, brings in another reliever. That's Fingley with a double and a walk. And he goes after the first pitch, pops it up. That one should reach the seats. And it does. Rattles around. And as always, the gentleman who doesn't move, it falls right in his lap. Thing of beauty, that guy right there, he did not move. He just turned around. <laughs> there it was. Hey. Got his collar up to keep the sun off the back of his neck. See, These look, two guys clanked it and then just yeah, good, thank you. right in his lap. That was easy. Uh, guess what I did at the Angels game? And I caught this line oh, yeah. drive. Leaped over. Oh, people. gosh, what a great play I made. I gave it to a child. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the guys who clanked it asked for the ball back. That's they can we get it. Yes. Clank one, you should go back in the concourse. <laughs> Owen to Fengley. John Axford in the A's bullpen. Part of the equation today, Ray, is the fact that Sean Doolittle threw 33 pitches last night. I'd be surprised if he's available. Unless it was an absolute emergency. Yep. And it'd probably be one batter. Ryan Dull pitched last night. He's ready. And he only <laughs> threw eight pitches, and Liam Hendricks threw 24. Yeah, Hendricks saved it last night. Getting some depth to Bob Melvin. Pitch and Fengley. I just get the feeling that the A's are going to have to work hard for this one. You know, you get that feeling once in a while. Well, and if you look at the three games already in this series, every game the A's have had the lead late, and it's not been easy. Mm -hmm. The Angels have put runners on the board and took Matson facing Pujols a couple of nights ago. Right. Doolittle, of course, gave up the two runs that would have been in Graveman's game, a two-run shot to to Jet Bandy. Of course, last night. Ooh. And that hit Fegley like in the left hand. First base, up and in, it was three and two count. Tried to go inside. Anytime on the hands, that's always a concern. Hands are tough to get hit and not feel it. Bill John has good buddy Stephen Vogt with ice on the hand, yeah. on the wrist. So here's Yonder Alonzo. Alonzo is one for three. He's got a single, an RBI, and a run score. His first three at bats came against the left hander Santiago. Field defense straight up for Lonzo. He really hits it to all fields. Outfield shifted toward left center. The Trojans ready. There's a fastball on the outside corner. 
97 miles an hour. This ball kept running, according to Quinn Walcott, who is the only one that matters. The pitch on the outside corner. I think uh, Alonzo thought so. Following into the first row. It's a good move there. She's got a foul ball. I think that may have come close to hitting her, which is a scary thought. So the count all even two and two. A little flip job fair down the left field line. Begley thought about going to third. And he decides to do the right thing and stop at second. And Alonzo is two for four. Come on, didn't check up like Coco's last night. Coco's checked up, go in the foul territory, got him an easy double. Similar type spin on the ball inside out swing from Alonzo, but. It just seemed to stay enough for Nava to get to the ball to hold Fegley at second. So here's Alcantara. A couple of strikeouts and a base hit for Alcantara. Those were batting right handed. Over top of breaking ball from Pedrosian. Now Kantra is, from what we've been told, a guy who can play numerous positions. We've just seen him at second base. Now both times giving Jed Lowry the afternoon off, which he played earlier in the week against the Brewers. One thing that Bob Melvin said, and there was a talk that maybe he would give Simeon a day off, but he. Decided against it and decided to keep Marcus Simeon in his everyday playing at shortstop. And continues to play well. And Marcus doesn't want a day off. And he's not thinking of Cal Ripken Jr. or anything like that, but he said, I'm young, I feel fine, let me play. And his numbers have shown how important he is to the ball club. And he swings and misses some good breaking balls there thrown by Cam Bedrosian to strike out in the country. A couple of strikeouts from the right side with runners on the bases this time. Did single in his last at bat. Stole a base. So now it's up to Coco Crisp. Can he do more damage? Grand slam in the fourth. Two on, two out. He's looking to get a couple of those runs back. In the bottom of the eighth inning, it'll be Crone, Giovatella, Marte, three right handed hitters. Axford is ready to go. Struck call to even the count at one and one. Have stranded five through the first seven innings. Well, thankfully, they had a five spot in the fourth inning. Thanks to the two out grand slam by Coco and the home run right behind him by Marcus Simi. Nice block, Carlos Perez. I've seen Jet Bandy in the first three games doing this and Perez equaling him and his efforts behind the plate.
Bedrosian's going to be ready to throw this at some point, I think, don't you? As his infielders hope so. <laughs> and now three and one. Maybe he just wants to load the bases to face Marcus Simeon with another opportunity for a slam. So Coco sitting on a 3 1 count. And here it is. And it's driven to center. Trout going back, but Trout's going to get there. Shading his eyes, makes the kick. Side retired. He's strand a pair. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Seatbelts on, folks. 6 4 8. By Toyota, the full-line automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience TV. Game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. 6, 8, and 0 oh for the A's. 4, 8, and 0 oh for the Angels. He's six outs away from a four game sweep, so a little work to do. Trying to get Sonny Gray his first win since April 22nd. Coco Chris, the big hit in the game. It was a grand slam in the fourth inning. That was followed up by a Marcus Simeon home run. That is the five spot in the fourth for the Athletics. So, new pitcher for the A's is John Axford. Rodriguez goes in inning, gives up the two runs on the Trout home run. So now Axford will try to have a nice quiet eighth <laughs> inning. <laughs> yes, I like those quiet so innings. Try to have a nice quiet eighth inning. <laughs> First pitch to CJ Crone is a fastball outside. So she either has a lot of confidence or Houston Street's going to get some work. I think it is Street loosening in the bullpen. Missed again outside, so the count 2 and 0. So there is Houston Street. Lightly tossing. May have swung at a ball. And yeah, that's big because watching Simmons, he did single in front of Mike Trout, but he took a strike. First pitch of the at bat ended up getting a base hit, but if you're trailing, you want base runners, and that's where the unselfish players come in and be able to take a pitch, not afraid to take a strike, just trying to get on base. Popped up foul, two and two the count. 
Giovatella will be next, and then Marte here in the eighth. Crone with a single and a double in this game. He's two for three. Fastball is high. For the series, three for nine for C.J. Crone. At the plate and then rolls down the third base line, but it's a foul ball. Did it foot? <laughs> sure it did. <laughs> that time. That time it did. Funny we chuckle about it. It was a call that went the A's way. Mm -hmm. It was also two on and two out. That's right. Turns out it was a fairly big call by the umpire. Payoff pitch is hit hard. And Cantra stays with it. That's out number one here in the eighth. The ball hit it very hard. It was an atom ball. I mean, that was hit hard. Just the sound off the bat, extremely hard. And here's Giovatello. To final in Arlington, the Rangers beat the Red Sox. Six to two behind Martin Perez. So the Rangers win that series over Boston. Well, Texas will hit the road. They will go to New York tonight for a four game series Monday through Thursday. The Rangers at the Yankees this week. Well, maybe the Yankees didn't do the Rangers what they did to the A's in Oakland. They swept the A's in a four game series. That's how difficult it is and was, but the Yankees handle the athletics in Oakland, which is very rare. So maybe they can turn the tables on the Rangers, help the A's, and everybody else in the Western Division slow down the Rangers a little bit. Foul straight back. Texas now 49 and 27. They are rolling along, and with Houston losing, it's back to a 10 game lead. Well, win for the A's today, single digits and games behind, and small steps. That's what the A's need winning streaks and reduce the deficit. One and two now to Giovatella trying to get aboard. I'm going to sacrifice fly back in the first inning. Love of Fegley to the back snap. Giovatella has also grounded out a couple times today, both to the shortstop. Shoots that one high and foul. Tough out, Giovatella. Yeah, he does not strike out a lot. Yeah. And you know, he doesn't walk. Ray, he has walked seven times yeah. this year. Uh, Kurt Young talking about Max Muncy and Giovatella hit a couple of balls to right field. They've brought Max Muncy in. And Muncy, a good job not breaking back, instead breaking in and robbed him of what looked like a couple of hits. Curveball, fair, headed for the left field corner. 
And Gio Vitella is going to have a one out double. So for Gio Vitella, his seventh hit in the series. Well, he just waited, got the curveball, and you've seen him hit sliders and curveballs down the left field line. This one a double. You've seen him go to the seats. Fortunately, this one did not, but it does bring a potential tying run to the plate. And that'll be Jeffrey Marte. Marte today has struck out, hit a fly ball to left, and grounded to third. It's one high down the right field line. Foul. Looks like the A's outfielders may have taken a step or two back. It's like they're playing pretty deep. Watch this out. Bodies are probably softer than those seats, so that's maybe a good idea. Those really hot plastic seats. <laughs> Mariners and the Cardinals still playing. St. Louis has stormed back and you know, lead the Mariners six to three in the bottom of the sixth at that Safeco Field in Seattle. They like that one. Daniel Nava is the on deck hitter. So, Axford after Rodriguez, Rodriguez after Gray. Blocked by Fegley, and the ball rolls out in front. Nobody's going anywhere. Had to hit something hard to yeah. bounce that far out. Fegley didn't know where it was, but the runner in second did. Give a tell it, and so did Axford. So one and two the count. There's a shot to center and that's a base hit. Gio Vitella rounds third. He's going to come in to score and it's six to five. Jeffrey Marte gets a big hit. Another two strike hit also. Just like Jim Vitello, the double on two strikes. Marte pitch up a little bit and handled it well. So just nothing is easy. And you're right playing back, there was no chance to get to it anyway, but playing a little bit deeper and probably do the same with Donovan. So Nava digs in. He is 0 for 3. Couple of ground outs and a strikeout. Nice pitch to Nava. Not close. Fegley has a reach up to grab it. Talk about the amount of work that the Angels bullpen has gone through in this series. 
The A's relievers in the first three games of the series, a total of 11 innings pitched. So that's a fairly high amount. And now 2 0. Begley has it drop right at his feet. Well, that's one head high and the next one in the dirt. Begley trying to <laughs> keep the ball in front of him. And right now, double play is in order. However, ball gets by and puts a runner in scoring position, the tying run. The A's hope they have somebody to pitch the ninth inning. That it's necessary to pitch the ninth inning. And not the guy in the middle, Stephen Bolt. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Two and zero oh to Daniel Nava. Again, the outfield playing pretty deep. Misses badly 3 0 with Carlos Perez in the on deck circle. Tough job for a manager. What do you do? And especially if certain guys aren't available, it makes it even harder to try to take it to the end. This is high and it's a four pitch walk and now the tying run is at second base. And it's not going to be Perez. Jack Bandy. Yeah. And Kurt Young to the mound. That for whatever reason it was not going to be easy, and it is not going to be easy. So Bandy will hit for Perez. So Shane Robinson is the pinch runner at first base. So lots of speed at first. And Bandy, a fly ball hitter, if Ace can find a way to get him to hit the ball on the ground, get a double play. Robinson has the speed at first, but Bandy, not as much swing on the bat. Ground ball is the key. And for John Axford, he's up and he's down, and not exactly what you want to see in a pitcher at this point because he. You feel you have to try to groove one to throw a strike. That's when the hitter is going to be ready. And Bandy has the power to do it. And he may not be waiting around. First pitch is hit in the air behind short. Simeon backpedaling. And he's got it. So a big out there as Bandy goes after the first pitch. And there's the definition of a cut fastball. Just enough was not the true fastball. Got it. He got under it. From his standpoint, he didn't hit it on the ground too. Sam hit it in the air. So A's hope to have a pitcher in the ninth inning. If they do, it's back to the top. That is assuming Simmons makes out. That's the big out right here to keep the one run lead. Andrewton Simmons, a ground out, a walk, and a single so far. First pitch, base hit center field. Here comes Marte. Marte's going to score, and this ball game is tied at six with Robinson going to third. So a huge hit for Andrelton Simmons on the first pitch he sees. He goes right back up the middle. 
fastball right down the middle, not the little cutter. Instead of fastball, he hit down on it and hit it in the perfect spot. Wow. So Bob Melvin is going to come and get Axford. Two thirds of an inning for Axford, and the Angels have tied it here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Now with Cole Calhoun coming up, it's going to be the lefty Zepchinski coming in. 6-6 six, six game, bottom of the eighth. in the eighth to tie it and they're still batting. So now it's going to be up to Mark Zipchinski to get Cole Calhoun and keep this a 6 6 game. And you almost get the feeling that that trout home run sort of put momentum back into the Angels dugout. And that was in the seventh inning. So Axford goes two thirds of an inning, gives up three hits and a walk. And here's Calhoun. Robinson is at third. Simmons is at first. First pitch is a breaking ball, flipped in there first strike. Oh for four against Zepchinski is Cole Calhoun. In today's game, he is one for four. And we have seen him handle lefties pretty nicely mm -hmm. in this series. Not that time, and it's 0-2. Calhoun, a very aggressive hitter. And good breaking ball, good slider. Here's where you have to worry about. The Angels with the runner at first and third, speed at third, and would Mike Sosha try a trickery, something a trick to try to steal a run? Robinson really coming down the line like he should with Valencia way off the bag. Slider down low, so Calhoun takes that one. Busy day for Josh Beckett. He yep. blocked a lot of balls. He has. Yes. Well, he's done a good job, and that's one of his strengths. And he takes a lot of pride in being athletic behind the plate, and especially with the speed at third, it would not take much. Because with the shift, Robinson is getting down the line. Houston Street is heating up to pitch the ninth, one way or the other. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a hard slider. Simmons was on the move. So Sepchinski does his job, but the Angels have tied it. So ninth inning coming up, but it'll be Simeon Valencia and Davis. It's a 6 6 game.
Tonight, as the A's and the Giants open up the Bay Bridge Series, Daniel Migden and Jeff Samarja, and we will have it for you right here on Comcast Sportsnet California. A's pregame live at 6.30, first pitch at 7.15 from AT&T Park. Let's log on to CSNCalifornia.com for our A's insider, Joe Stiglitz, the home of authentic A's fan is CSN. So that'll be, again, tomorrow night, Monday night, Tuesday night in San Francisco, Wednesday night, Thursday night at the Coliseum. We'll have all four of those games for you. Right here on Comcast Sports in California. A difference in this game, the bullpens of the bullpen of the Angels, only two hits allowed in the last four innings after the five run fourth inning. The A's scoring the five with two outs. Now Houston Street, the closer, trying to get his club back to the dugout with a tie score. First pitch strike to Simeon. And he'll face the, the big home run hitters for the A's. Simeon, who's got one today, and Valencia and Davis. Houston Street, not a hard thrower. 88, 89, 90. Got a little deception with the, the three quarter delivery. There's a strike, one and two. Houston Street. One of the advantages you have if you're the home team and it's tied in the ninth inning, you can use your closer if you want when it's tied. Because they a save situation is not going to happen if you're the home team. Right. Well, the A's can hold on to a closer. It's just a question for closers available. And that one right at the knees with the little slider that Houston Street throws. And he gets the strike out of Simeon. He doesn't throw hard, but he knows how to paint. He had a kind of a backup slider for strike two. This one, more of a slider, went straight down. Marcus Simeon not able to swing. I would say that's the one you want to hit, mm -hmm. right? The one that kind of backs up a little bit, doesn't have that sweeping effect. Valencia is 0 for 3 with a walk. Not gonna come inside a whole lot no. to right-handed hitters. Uh, he wants the slider just to kind of tease the hitters. He doesn't overpower you with the slider, no his fastball, but teases you with all the pitches. First baseline, Street will pick it up himself, hustle to the back. So one unassisted. Two outs. Madsen on the right, Hendricks on the left. Mm -hmm. All kinds of guys to help Houston Street catch his breath. Yeah, everybody's out there. Simmons, Giovatella, his catcher. Started walking over, told Crone, go back to first base. I don't want you around. Houston Street has 322 career saves. First pitch to Davis. First strike, and that's the pitch that backs up. Chris Davis today is 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts. And now the count even to make that 0 and 2. You were talking about momentum. Momentum is a day like today because the A's score early, not been able to add on. Been happy to get a hit or two, but no runs for sure. While the Angels have keep adding on, coming back as they did in Oakland when Graveman start. Well, check no swing. The sad part, unless the A's win this game, that. 
slam by Coco Crisp. You gotta forget about it. He won't. A lot of people won't, but well, unless you win, especially after having a 62 lead, it makes it difficult to, to think about not coming away with a win. That one tapped up the third base line. And it's going to be an infield hit for Davis. And he's still alive here in the ninth inning to get the go ahead run. Pinch hitter for Billy Butler, Stephen Vogt. And Chris Davis with Houston Street cutting in front of Marte might have distracted him a little bit, but it's going to be tough to throw him out, even had he come up with it cleanly. So in the DH spot, Stephen Vogt will take over. Only one for two with a walk. And probably not too happy right now. No. You'd be happy if Stephen Vogt hits a home run. And it would have to be one because as deep as the outfield is right now, and <laughs> you know the, the, the play that Trout made in right center. You know that's be, he plays deep and he's able to get the balls and make plays rob hitters of extra bases. And right now, a step and he's on a warning track. Same all the way around. Vote and a good swing in the first fastball. We saw 87 miles an hour. Well, you like to see him take a rip at that one. Vote is one for four as a pinch hitter this year. I have to think also, Kat, with Smolensk in the on deck circle, another right handed hitter should vote find a way to get on base. Unless it is a two run home run to give the A's a lead. You think that maybe Max Muncy would come in. They're not going to bring somebody in for Houston Street. That's going to stay in the game through this inning. Davis goes, throw to second base, is. Got it. He came off the bag. He beat it originally, slid past the bag, and Simmons kept the tag on him. And Chris Davis is out. So that's how the top of the ninth comes to an end. He's thinking about taking a look at it. But that is not going to happen. And there he came off. Did they push him off? <laughs> so we're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. And it is going to be Trout and then Pujols. And there's your replay. He came off and he knew it. Coco Chris with the A's trailing by a run did this. Two outs, grand slam left center field, and Coco's third of his career. Santiago beating his right hand into the ground. That time it all looked great. Next batter, Simeon hit a home run. Coco Chris, though, sitting on a slam. Great series, but right now the A's 
trying to take it to the extra innings and they have the guy who made it a two run game at the plate now facing Liam Hendricks who pitched very well last night and right back on the mound again this afternoon. First pitch to Mike Trout up and away. Trout is two for four with a two run homer in the seventh. Change the score from six to two to six to four. Swing and a miss. Good pitch by Hendricks. Took something off. Trout in this series is nine for 17. So we've seen enough of him. <laughs> he doesn't need to prove anything to us. Yeah, four game series. You got to see him a lot. <laughs> Pujols to follow and then Crone. William Hendricks threw 24 pitches in last night's game. Inning in two thirds. And Trout went after that high fastball and thought better of it but could not hold up. So the count is even at two and two. Pitch is popped up back behind home plate. Fegley will run out of him. Well, this was in the seventh inning and against Fernando Rodriguez at fastball down and in. And tough place to try to pitch it. Coco and Spider Man could not reach it. But Mark Trout is good a fastball or hitter inside part of the plate as anybody. Most guys want to get out of the kitchen. He doesn't mind coming in and seeing what's there because he is quick. Down and in. Two, two pitch. Followed off the facing of the upper deck. Two pitch, another close one, a little off the plate. Fastball and Trout rolls it foul, bounces up over the dugout into the crowd. 6 9 and 0 for the A's, 6 11 and 0 for the Angels. Base hit left field. And really a pretty good pitch. Yep. A breaking ball down and away, and Trout. I think mean, the fact that he can wait so long, yeah. Ray, and he waits. And if he's out in front a little bit, he still is able to hook it. Down on the way, maybe even out of the strike zone. He gets a base hit on a pitch that very well thrown by Hendricks. Had a slider cutter action to it. And but you're right, he waited, he waited, he's so strong that once he made contact, shoots through the infield. So a leadoff single for Trout here in the bottom of the ninth, and that'll bring up Albert Pujols. And you better pay attention to him at first. And there he goes. And Pujols mm. fouls it into the upper deck. He might have been trying to hit the ball to right field. Got another huge hole on the right side. Uh, Contra going over to take a possible throw that never came. But you know, boys, as we've talked about. Unless Pujols was shooting the ball to the right side, which he's already gotten two hits there today. He is a right handed hitter, and he could see Trout take off even if Trout had the green light, which he probably does.
So 0 and 1 to Pujols. Trout not running this time. Oh, it's a swing and a miss. And it's 0 and 2. Crone on deck. Pujols this afternoon. He is two for four. He's got two singles, both of them to the right side. He's looking for a ground ball. Pujols not running well at all. But they're hoping that he pulls a pitch, which he has not done. And again, an opportunity here for him to do what he does best, and that is to hit the ball to the right side. Pull it in the seats, but he can also go to right field. Takes that one, one and two. Pujols steps back in. Trout ran on the first pitch, has not ran since, and there's a base hit left field. A line shot. Well, the big hitters did their thing. Back to back singles for Trout and Pujols. Fastball and whatever Trout swung at, uh, Pujols swung at and missed was full badly. Did not get the pitch again. So C.J. Crone is the hitter. C.J. Crone, a big power hitter. He does not have a sacrifice bunt this year. But Ray, the Angels lead the American yeah. League in sacrifice bunts. What do you think? I don't think so. I don't think either because it brought Jeff Vitella to face Marte and then uh, Robinson who follows him. So I I just don't uh, probably not. I'd say and the A's have to hope to get a, a double play ground ball, although Crone is good going to right field, which we have seen. But unfortunately, Kipe okay, in the last inning, two hits with two strikes. That was a double and an RBI single in this inning. Both hits with two strikes. That one just missed. And sadly, as Brian points out, seven of ten Trouts hits this series have come with two strikes. And that's good hitting. We talked about Valencia and some of the A's hitters with great averages on two strikes. Missed again. Now it's 2 and 0. Oh. So the margin for error gets a little smaller every time you miss the strike zone for Liam Hendricks. He's led this game 6 2 after six innings. There's the strike. Down around the knees. Cohen thought it was a little low. And it was. <laughs> well, the A's catch a break that time. Giovatella is your next hitter. And Trout. Almost got picked off. I don't know if he was stealing. I wouldn't say that necessarily. He just said, I'm going to get a good lead here. And Hendricks picked a good time to spin around. And he might have been thinking about stealing Maybe. if Liam Hendricks had not looked a second time. And sometimes a pitcher gets in a little bit of a habit, a pattern of looking once and then looking back to plate. And that enables the runners to get a huge jump. But Fegel has got to throw to second if Trot does steal if Pujols does take off. He's getting hugely laid off first. 
Popped up. Should be infield fly rule, and now it's called, and Crone got himself in a hitter's count with the game on the line and popped out. Hey, the Angels bat boy, or bat boys, have gotten their work in. Every bat's been halfway down the first base line. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, lot they're, of bats being tossed. They're running all over the place. <laughs> and it's away from their dugout, obviously. So here's Giovatella. Giovatella is one for three today with a sacrifice fly. He has never had a hit against Hendricks. Now Contra playing him to pull near second base with the hole on the right side and. That's the scary thing with Johnny Giovatella. He waits a long time, and if that's the case, sometimes you you see balls hit the right side when you don't expect them. And watches that one miss outside. Does Giovatella? For the crowd over 36,000, decent share have stuck around. In the shade. So 18 pitches for Liam Hendricks. Doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, he threw 24 last night. Hard bounces right up into the Angels dugout. So the count even at one and one. Hayes will head back home. The Angels will stay home and get ready for the Houston Astros tomorrow night. In a couple steps. Now two and one. I'm going to have a shot to throw out Trout, which is not easy to do, but if it's a, a line drive one hop to an outfielder, then you may have a shot. Only if he hesitates. <laughs> He's got tremendous speed. Scary speed. And that's why Hendricks has to keep looking at him a couple of times. Don't give him the, the idea that he can steal third. Good swing there by Giovatella, and the count is even at two and two. Jeffrey Marte, and that hit it. So, Kai, if Giovatella is a tough man to strike out, then you're looking for a double play ground ball. Right. He puts the ball in play. If it's to the left side, it's an easy turn. Two two pitch a breaking ball away and a full count. How about this scenario. You strike him out throw him out at second. Yeah. With Trout stealing third or at least going to third. Because I don't have any. Any doubt that if they do take off. And the fact that if a teller makes contact doesn't strike out a lot it'd be a perfect perfect time to do it. For the Angels. Runners do go, and the pitch is high. He walked it. You know what, Kite? They wouldn't have thrown out Pujols. Oh, yeah, he was so far oh. off. So far off at a high leg kick by Hendricks. So the bases are loaded, one out in the bottom of the ninth of a 6 6 game, and Jeffrey Marte, who had a huge hit in the eighth inning, an RBI single. That made it six to five. Yeah. 
Infield in, the outfield better come in a little bit more shallow because if not, if a fly ball is hit, Trout's got the speed. Again, you, you got the fastest guy at third base. That one is deep to right field. Smolinski back. Smolinski has it. Trout tags, and Trout will come home, and that's the ball game. So Marte goes after the first pitch. A sacrifice fly, plenty deep to score the speedy Mike Trout, and the Angels come storming back. They score two in the seventh, two in the eighth, and they win it here in the ninth to avoid the four-game sweep. So the A's were that close to getting the sweep, they just could not do it, and Marte did not wait around. Well, there's just no chance the ball's hitting the air, and really any ball hit in the air to the outfield, you figure it's going to happen. Pujols' arms race. He knew it was deep enough, and you know at this point, with only one out, you're looking for a ground ball. Didn't get it. Smolinski with a courtesy throw, but absolutely no chance to throw out Trout with speed. So it took three hours and 33 minutes. The attendance this afternoon was 36,715. So. A good weekend but a disappointing finish to the weekend as the Angels come back and they win it seven to six over the A's. You've been watching A's baseball on CSN California. It's all part of the NBC Sports Group. Don't go away. A's post game live with Chris Townsend and Bip Roberts starts right now.